likely to be fat embolism. Can it be MI? Yes, possible, but there is no chest pain, not much of chest pain. But it remains a DD. So, what is the diagnosis? Diagnosis is pulmonary thromboembolism. And why pulmonary thromboembolism? So, possibly this lady who had a lower limb fracture must have been bedridden for 2 3 days, then she underwent nailing. And now, even though you have nailed it, patient will still find to mobilize much because elderly and that can start the defense thrombosis. And often the defense thrombosis is not picked up clinically. There are silent defense thrombosis which can just break and propagate into the lung causing the pulmonary thromboembolism. So, we did discuss this couple of times. So, 2 hour shock, 2 days fat embolism and 2 weeks, around 2 weeks is the timing for pulmonary thromboembolism. But a DD of MI must always be kept in the mind because it can sometimes appear in the similar fashion. This is the same rule of 2 which we just now discussed. So, pulmonary thromboembolism is a result of a deep in thrombosis. And etiopathology is the same, the clot from the DVT breaks from the, the, the clot and it goes and lodges into the pulmonary artery and the lung. The symptom and sign depend upon the size of the clot and amount of the blockage in the lung and the pulmonary vessels. The signs and symptoms are typically sudden in onset, they are usually quite sudden and depends upon the size of embolus. So, there can be a smaller embolus, very small embolus, so that can cause mild chest pain, some pleuritic rub and usually a stable cardiovascular status means the pulse and BP is usually normal, but you have to suspect it clinically if patient says I have got chest pain, some pleuritic rub, but then again this could be the similar features of the MI, so you have to use the investigation to differentiate between the two. If the embolus is larger, it can cause quite severe chest pain dyspnea, tachycardia, but still the cardiovascular system, the BP and pulse remain relatively stable. But if it is a very massive embolus, which we call it as a saddle thrombus, which sits at the bifurcation of the vessel, that can cause a sudden precipitous hypotension, bradycardia, sometimes cardiac arrest, it is like a blue in a bolt, that is the classic description, blue in a bolt, it is like just sudden and very, very unstable cardiovascular status. So, that is usually the indicator of the massive embolism. And this is how the clot breaks from here and it goes into the, goes from the, the heart, it goes to the heart and then from the heart it can go to the lung and block the vessels. Investigations, so the first and foremost thing what you want to do is take a chest x-ray which because of the blockage of vessels, once the vessels are blocked, there is no circulation in the lung. That is why you get oligemia. Sometimes you may find a large pulmonary artery, a wedge shape opacity and a occasional pleural effusion. This is a another MCQ which is asked S1, Q3, T3, the typical ECG finding, whereas other findings could be bundle branch block, ventricular strain pattern, etc. Since the oxygenation of the lung is now affected, you can do the ABG which will show you the hypoxia and hypocapnia. D-dimer level are important both for the DVT as well as the pulmonary thromboembolism, very sensitive but not a specific investigation. So, especially this one and D-dimer remains an important MCQ for you. The other investigations are one can do the CT scan which is a gold standard today, the CT pulmonary angiography, this is the gold standard. Some of the other investigations are like ventilation perfusion scan, not routinely periperformed or transthoracic echocardiography. How do we treat pulmonary thromboembolism? So, oxygen with or without ventilation in the especially the people who come with a stable um, cardiovascular status. Intravenous infusion of the low malclobate heparin for few days followed by long term warfarin because the source is somewhere else. That source also you have to find out in the DVT and keep treating that. If there is a massive thrombus, but the patient is stable, one can use the thrombolysis especially in the massive pulmonary thromboembolism. If there is a big area of thrombus in the lower limb and you feel that patient will keep getting these multiple showers or somebody who is getting a multiple episodes of this pulmonary thromboembolism. Today one happened, after a few months again one happened. 
it means that there is a thrombus which is continuously coming from the lower limb. In such cases, patient must be given a IVC filter, intra inferior vena cava filter. Here a clinical scenario, another clinical scenario. So after a building collapse, the national disaster relief team rescued a man who was stuck under the debris for 6 hours. So sometimes you must have seen lot of buildings fall, keep on falling in rainy season or during the earthquake or a dilapidated building fell down and went.